we want to move beyond calculating probabilities associated with the binomial distribution to estimating parameters and finding a quote-unquote usual range using that range rule of thumb. So we're told in this example that the probability of a patient dying after a particular high-risk procedure is 0 0.08. So that's the same thing as 8%. In order to determine whether they are performing at a high level, a hospital decided to review the results of the last 400 patients who underwent the procedure. How many of the patients would we expect to have died after this procedure? What's the mean and standard deviation? Even before we do anything, I mean, I actually should have stopped even before I read that problem, because we can, before we do anything, realize that we are talking about a binomial distribution here, and we can immediately write out the values of n, p, and q. That should be the first thing that you do, is to recognize this as a binomial distribution. I know that because in this, in this case, we are looking at in, um, trials that are repeating, so one surgery after another. The particular quote-unquote success is the same for each, each surgery. And there are only two possibilities the patient lives or they do not live. So that's how we see this. There's two outcomes here for each trial. Now let's go through and figure out what these values are. N is the number of trials. And in this case, each trial is going to be one surgery. So we have 400 patients or 400 surgeries that we're looking back on. The probability of success. Now this is the exact definition of where success doesn't mean success as we usually mean it. 0.08 is going to be our probability of success in this problem. We use the word success, but obviously that's not a success. Success just means an outcome that we are investigating. And in this case, a positive, a positive success, a positive effect in this case would be an outcome where a patient had died. So obviously success is not the correct term. But mathematically and using the binomial distribution, it is. Q would be 1 minus 0.08, which in this case would be 0.92. So now that we have these values of N, P, and Q, I can answer this question. How many would we expect? The expected value, the expected value is the same thing as the mean. The expected value, which is equal to the mean, can be found by taking n times p. In this problem, n is the number of trials, which is 400. p is the probability of the outcome we're looking for, which is 0 0.08, which is the probability that that patient did not survive. U, or excuse me, mu, would be equal to 400 times 0 0.08. If you multiply that, you get 32. Out of 400 patients using this rate of 0.08, knowing that the percent chance of a patient not surviving is 8%, out of 400 patients, we would expect 32 patients not to survive. That's what we would expect. That's the mean. That's the same thing as the expectation. The standard deviation can be found by taking this n times p, so start there, then multiply it by q, and then take the square root. So if we were to plug these in, we would get the square root of 0 0.08 times 400 times 0.92, which you could just take this 32 and plug that in here. I'm first going to multiply what's inside. So I get 0 0.08 times 400 times 0 0.92. 29.44 is what I get inside. And then when you take the square root of that number, you get 5.42586. So it's not necessary to have all those digits. Let's round to the tenths place. We'll have 5.4. So our mean was 32. Our standard deviation is 5.4. How is that helpful? Well, knowing the rule of thumb, right? Remember the rule of thumb says if you take the mean and add two standard deviations and then take the mean and subtract two standard deviations, we can get a usual range of values.
So the hospital determined that 47, in their investigation, 47 died after this procedure. Is this an unusual finding? To determine whether it's unusual, we need to have that range. We need to create that range. So if we take the mean and add two standard deviations, this would be 32 plus 2 times 5.4. So 32 plus 2 times 5.4, you get 42.8. That's the upper bound. And we could stop right there, but we might as well just figure out the lower bound because we don't know if we're going to be asked questions later. So the mean here, again, 32 minus 2 times 5.4. So we're subtracting two standard deviations. So 2 times 5.4, you should get 21.2. So our usual range of values, 21.2 all the way up to 42.8. And I'm writing this in what's called interval notation. That's the the range that we would call the usual range. So if the hospital determined that 47 patients did actually, they, they did not survive this, we would call that unusual. That's outside the usual range. That is an unusual finding. I needed to find the range in order to answer that question. And in order to find the range, I need to be able to calculate the mean and the standard deviation.